Well, my mother, she loved this business, but she was very colorful, very smart. Her comment about this business was that it's the second oldest profession. Colorful comparisons aside, we doubt Robert Lane's mother knew much about the world's oldest profession. But one look inside the city shoe shop in downtown Palestine, and you'll see why she called her family business the second oldest profession. Well, it's my dad's shop, so he used to work at this jack. I worked over there, and whenever I wasn't in school or on Saturdays, he, I'd come down and we'd work. And back in those days, it was a a lot of boots and shoes to work on. And I'd tear them down just like I'm doing right now when I did when I was about 13, 14 years old. My dad and mother, it was their shop, and they, they moved in here. They were in business from, since 1943, but everything's set up just like it was since 1957, so it's kind of like being at home. You know, I've been coming in here since I was eight years old. I learned to work from my dad growing up and helped him. This place is a time capsule. Decades of dust cover the old heel boxes on the shelf. Strands of glue have built up into geological formations on Robert's workbench. It's even still run by Mr. Lane and his wife. Sandra, have you placed that order with M&F yet? It's I'm working on the computer right now. Albeit the next generation. And it still relies on the original equipment Robert's dad cobbled together. I really haven't bought any machinery. I don't know that singer machine over there is probably from the probably from the forties, maybe the thirties and my dad bought that stitcher new in, in 1960, so it's made probably the newer piece of equipment. Kind of a challenge at times to keep it running, but it all still works. Why not turn these in and get something newer? I just uh, kind of sentimental about it. You know, I, I can remember my dad, as long as I remember working on that old finisher, and so, uh, I, you know, newer machines would do the job better, maybe, uh, but I'm used to working on that machine, and. And I could say, I, I, I just, I just what I want to stay with. <laughs> Time was, there were several shoe repairs in Palestine. But these days, Robert and Sandra have the sole shop. And their community appreciates that heritage every time someone walks in with a broken boot. I need to pick up a pair of boots. There was always a lot of shoe and boot work here in Palestine, all through the years. and. Uh, it's just kind of a shoe boot repair town, always had been. Most of what we do is boot work. Some of the shoes are, are repairable, but a lot of them are, are not as repairable as they once were, I'll put it that way. And people seem to be grateful for it, you know, that we're here. And it's kind of heartwarming for them to express that, that to me, you know. And so it's, it, it makes you feel good. <laughs> For the past 80 years, a lane man has been behind a cobbler station somewhere in downtown Palestine. The current location has been open continuously since 1957. Well, almost. Just a few years ago, some bad news put this quiet craftsman back on his heels. July of 2018, I was diagnosed with uh, cancer, a cancer called angiosarcoma. I had a tumor right here on my, my head, uh, not a big one, about like my about like my little finger. We just got the word, and it's always so devastating to have the C word, and uh, we just felt the need to close the shop. I had 16 chemotherapy treatments for 16 weeks, and I had six weeks of, of radiation, five days per week, 30 of them, so it was in my lymph node as well, but I had, had surgery to remove the tumor, and about a week later, the, the surgeon called and said that they'd got all the cancer. God was really with me the whole time. I had people, after we got opened back up, there was, I, there was people coming in all the time telling me how they prayed for me, for people I didn't even know. 
and we were real concerned about how we would get the word out that we're back. And my son just said, open the door. Good morning. Hey, Mr. Davis, how you doing? Fine, thanks. Good, good. We had people coming in with bags full of <laughs> the repairs within the hour, and they've not stopped coming. Let's see, got the soles and heels on these Luke Casey's. And thank you, Jim, okay. I appreciate yeah. it. Good to see you again. Yes, sir. With his cancer gone and the community behind him, Robert stepped back into his familiar spot. And although he could have retired years ago, he remembers what it was like the first time this shop lost its owner. He thinks about his dad often and is still here trying to fill his shoes. It was a mom and pop shop and they spent so many hours in here, you know, because that's what they had to do to make a living. And You know, it's kind of like they're here with me. <laughs> I will really get to hear it if you're not careful, but he was just a gentle man. That's all I could say. He was a, really a, a fine, fine person. I don't remember him ever, and I needed it a lot, but I don't remember. He, he never spanked me, he never did. He was just always kind and gentle to me. He was, he was just a prince. He really was. Growing up, I guess I wasn't as impressed with him as I should have been because people come in all the time still talking about what a good man he was and things he did for them. And coming down here, it almost feels like I'm with him. So sometimes I go back, get back there on that work, Jack, and imagine he's up here. In a humble repair shop in East Texas, we found a couple crafting a legacy. The Lane family has left their footprints all over town, and their calm, constant presence reveals what their customers in Palestine already know. The world still needs these gentle souls. What you're doing here, is it worthwhile? It's not taking us to world peace or anything, but it's, it's my little piece of the world, all I know. <laughs> It's important to me in all kinds of different ways. 